Right, welcome back to the uh, View from the Allotment End podcast. Um, we've just figured out that it's either the, well, it's definitely the first of the season. We can't remember whether it's the fourth or the fifth. It's the fifth. It's the fifth. Uh, the last one we did was um, in pre-season. We did it in summer. So we've had roughly two months of the season um, to talk about things that have happened locally. We're going to do a 15-minute spread on uh, North Ferriby, um, roughly 15 minutes on Hull City, and then wrap up 15 minutes on the local scene. So... Thanks very much for joining us tonight, it's uh, Tuesday night, what better way to spend an evening if you're watching football than talking about football, which is what we intend to do for the next 45 minutes, and then uh, scarp room and watch Bake Off on Plus One. Um, that's the plan anyway. Right, joining me tonight, uh, the far left of me to your right as you look, uh, our resident Hull City expert, um, <laughs> Rick Skelton at Hull City Live on Twitter, uh, to my immediate left. Is uh, Nick Quantrill at Nick Quantrill on Twitter, Housewives favourite, bringer of culture, etc. Writer of words. Uh, to my photographer of shite. To my right is uh, East Old Pete, Pete Fleming, and the reason why we're all here tonight, the man with the cam. Um, probably well known to most of you on Twitter as the unofficial filmer of football in many parts of the country. How many grounds have we been to so far, Pete? How many games? Uh, 45 this season. Jesus. <laughs> 45 into less than, what, three calendar months? Yeah. That's not bad going, it's is it? Bad going. Right, so one of the grounds you will have been to is, um, unfortunately, it's not very big. Um, not the best of starts to the season for uh, for the villagers. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. It's been it's just been a disaster from the opening kickoff, really. Uh, as we currently stand, 11 games in, one win, three goals... And God knows how many conceded. Twenty. I don't know. I lost count somewhere. No, I've lost somewhere count. in the spending. I thought, ball I thought game. it was four goals. Four now. Well, it's four right. now. Is it? Maybe four. I think. Christ, I've missed one. I don't know. I haven't seen a goal this season. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen one. <laughs> um, well, look on the bright side. I mean, Crystal Palace is about the only team in Western Europe that hasn't scored a goal. So at least they've been. Yeah, scored a goal. Yeah. Right? That's, <laughs> so so they anyway. would say they're the only team in the top eight levels of. Football or not something, to not, to have, yeah, not to score or not to be pointless or something, or something along those lines. I must do some prep next time, it's no good. So, Ferriby, this season, it's been a disaster, in your own words, Nick. <laughs> Pretty much, isn't it? Um, I, I suppose we should start by sort of pointing the finger where it needs pointing, really, and that's the owners, isn't it? I mean, I think, you know, Steve Alsham and Darren Stamp are on an absolute added to nothing. Um, you know, I mean, the budget last season was cut dramatically for the conference, for the national. Uh, and it's been cut again going down the division he's still trying to compete with full time clubs uh, and, and fairly powerful non-league clubs so uh, yeah he's drawn a hand into nothing I mean there are probably things you point out where you think you know have the management got it right or not but essentially it's polishing turds isn't it again <laughs> even know, in turds yeah even in turds I mean, I, mean, I mean it's not the players fault is it I mean that's to do with jobs they can't do um, because the budget is what it is and um, you know the, the owners have said nothing the management have said nothing there's just sounds coming out of the club, isn't there? Yeah, it's, um, been, um, it's almost like, you know, relegation is, is the end of the season. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, the, the Powsham and Stampy were demand a miracle last season, keeping the team within a faint chance of staying up. But, um, you know, it's looking like looks run out this season, a bit, it, really? Um, I, th- I, mean, I think the big thing last season was Reese Thompson came and did, you know, and saw a bit of the ground running and scored a lot of goals, but also was on the Miritans up front, but just occupied the defenders. Well, that's just missing this season, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the ball just st- it doesn't stick, does it? Just comes straight back, and yeah. you know the volume of pressure on, you know, Ross Durant has been probably the pick of the signings. It's been excellent generally so far. He was playing like Superman only in the first half of the season, but you know you're never going to maintain that level of form, and you know what we're seeing now four, five, six on a regular basis flying in. Yeah. Um, you know it's just it's just the weight of pressure into that's been put on the team. There's there's you no know, there's too many players in that team who, you know, out of the required standard. I think. Yeah. Well, the, your, your recruitment's been done from. A couple of levels below what they were and what they currently are, and and, and it shows, like you say, they're, they're being massively outcrossed. Yeah. Nick, you've seen a few quite yeah, a few I've seen a, a little bit of them. I, I just think they totally lack experience. Um, all of the players who come in from the leagues above are really young, um, which tends to happen in the Conference North. Really, is if, if clubs have got um, decent players, they tend to go maybe to to League Two clubs or National League clubs. You, you're only going to get really young players on loan. When you're in the Conference North, and and uh, what was it now? Four or five from Rotherham. Yeah, I don't know. So we've got half of, half of Rotherham's about under 19 <laughs> team. 
um, and then players who are, who are trying to step up. And I think, do you know, there's, there's promise in the players. I don't think, you know, they don't sign bad players. They've signed players like, like Ross Durant and Bobby Johnson, and I think there's potential there. And I, and I imagine somewhere around April we'll probably click and um, they'll make some players, but it'll be for somebody else again because this is the, the reason they're in the mess. It's because they've lost three quarters of a squad for two seasons in a row. Yeah. And you know, it's too early to talk to us about whole city. It's not their, it's not their section yet. But it's like it's like a mirror image to me of, of whole okay. city from the top down. Um, possibly less spite going on at North Ferriby. You know, I think I think North Ferriby's case, the owner just doesn't want it anymore, yeah. um, and don't want to keep paying the money that it takes to sort of subsidise it to a reasonable level. So I don't think it's as spiteful as Hull City, but it is just rotten from the top down. Managers got no chance. Recruitment's difficult, and and the players are just they do their best. I mean, you know, like we still yeah, go watch them. Yeah, yeah. It goes every week. Yeah, I mean, there's no um, there's no situation the players are trying, is there? No, and you've got to support them, don't you? Because yeah. because you, you feel for them really. You look out there and you think that you know they need help, don't they? They yeah, need four or five. That's a frustrating thing. If you put a handful of sort of seasoned players at that level into the team, then all of a sudden it's a different animal, isn't it? You know, you've got if you have that centre back who can organise a defence and a, and a centre forward who can sort of hold the ball up a little bit. All yeah. of a sudden, it looks a bit yeah. different, doesn't it? You know, some, you know, you try and get Curtis Bates and back on his game, and you know, all of a sudden, it looks a bit different. But and we have been saying that for mm. a good couple of seasons. Well, now, yeah, I mean, from I mean, the conference, yeah, season. there was a lack of was it Luke Foster, who the club announced a signing, and then the deal didn't sort of go through, and they did it for whatever reason. <laughs> even Luke, <laughs> if, if um, you even exist, yeah. But I mean, on paper, that was the kind of guy you wanted, wanted you know, thirty yeah. plus guy who played, you know, whatever, Next two or three hundred yeah, two or three hundred games yeah. in the centre of defence for like, you know, shit kicking United in division two or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need, isn't it? And that's Well I think I think it's notable that they look a better team when Russ Fry comes in. Mm. And it's just because there's just without him, what where's the experience? It's sort of Simon Russell, Mark Gray, mm. um yeah. you know, three probably three experienced players in the club. Uh, maybe Brogan you, you count as experienced. And and of them four, um three of them are missing half the half the time. Mm. Um so so basically, it's one <laughs> one experienced player in the team, and um, let's say it, it, it's, it's it's a good bunch, and, and uh, I like Stampy and, and Housh, and they they're doing their best, but it just everybody seems so out of their depth. And to me, if you're a club that gets relegated, and then you go into the league below, and your manager says, "I think will that be an achievement to stay up," yeah. you just know that that's you know if you're aiming for fifth from bottom of the conference north, chance of you go. Yeah. yeah, but there's a general malaise around the whole organisation, isn't there? I mean, when you get an email from them saying we haven't got any match ball sponsors, we haven't got any match sponsors, we haven't got player sponsors, can you try and find us? Some? <laughs> yeah, you know, at, you expect it at step five and six. Yeah, yeah. but not at step one and two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's such a small organisation, isn't it? And, it? and it always has been, in fairness. Um, and they're probably the owner was putting the money into make them punch above their weight but it's it's so small time um, which is okay I mean we, we, we go around grounds all the time don't we and we see yeah. loads of small small time football clubs and we, and we love it but when in the conference north it's it's too high a level to be that small yeah, yeah. you're playing against uh, towns aren't you and, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and full time clubs aren't you it's increasingly and, and you're buying into and you're against teams where they've got buyers in on sponsorship levels and, and mm -hmm. You know, a lot more of a professional type of attitude and organisation, which they just haven't got. No, and yeah. it's it's noticeable this last couple of seasons as well as how strong the Conference North is. Um, I mean, I think everybody was probably surprised a couple of seasons ago when Stockport fell into it. I mean, was it three, four seasons ago? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. now you've got ex football league clubs in it like Kidderminster and York. Yeah. You've got clubs like Harrogate and uh, Salford who are full time and yeah. who've got. Got money behind them and, and they've got promise and yeah and there's yeah and yes South Shields and Spenny Moore have come in and, and just gone straight into it and um, it's just not South Shields sorry just Spenny Moore yeah, that'll be next season that'll be next season yeah, yeah next season yeah Blythe, Blythe and Spenny Moore sorry the two I mean um, and they yeah they've gone straight into it and then you get all all your other clubs and the next football league clubs our friends in Boston are an ex football league club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like the whole city feature is from kind of 10, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, yeah. I mean, um, no, we're Stockport these days. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
it, it's it is it's quite a tough league, and I think and I think the standard is pretty good. It is, and but then the frustrating thing is that you don't have to be that good to be better than three teams in it, do you? When you look at the likes of FC Manchester, well, you've got to be better than Gainsborough, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, worse than Gainsborough. Yeah, I mean, Gainsborough are poor, but therapy, therapy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, Gainsborough have been kind of bottom six for a number of years, haven't they? Really, <clears> and, um, yeah, they're almost your benchmark, can't they? But when you go there, it's a proper ground, isn't it? It's a proper setup with sponsors it is, and all that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, a different yeah. level, isn't it? It's early days of the season, but have we seen so far? Have we seen seen potentially three teams worse than us? No. Yeah, but they went in the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> During the North Counties East. <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle to see. Isn't it? It's a struggle to see three teams in the North or in the West in very busy stands, unless. They somehow strengthen from. Yeah. And it's not just strengthening. I mean, I think they're, getting, they're doing the best they have numbers in early with these lads from Rotherham coming in and so on. But you need I, the I right mean, caliber yeah. of player. I, I don't think there'll be an improvement as the season goes on because the, these these lads are going to get experience from playing at this level. But it already looks too late. You know. Yeah. We're only what, less than a quarter of the way into the season, and yeah. there's, there's already like a gap. Mm. Um, so I, mean, I, I don't think they'll improve because young players generally do improve, but. I don't think they can do it quick enough for therapy. And they seem to have easier games towards the early part of the fixtures, didn't they? Yeah, got some tough games. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that really. I don't know if that counts so much. To be fair, beginning of well, the season. Well, not because you, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't know. you don't know going to be you know top end or not massively. We, I mean, you we get did kind of gaze into a sort of into a ball like that stage. But yeah. I think Saturday is a big indication at FC Manchester. Yeah, yeah. it's another proverbial six pointer into. Yeah, I think yeah. the disappointing thing was you get a team like Spennymore who have come up the previous season whereas opposed to we've gone down the previous season so it's a gauge isn't it and you'd like to think that you'd probably be equal to yeah. them and the fact that we got beat 6-0 at home was, a, was a massive eye on it for me yeah. and, and they were just I mean, oh, it was probably one of the few games that I've got to and seen the full game they, they, they were just that bit faster they were that bit wiser yeah, in I mean, certain I think, positions yeah well the funny thing is that they, the one win has come against a team who are probably one of the best that they've played yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. in terms of league yeah, <laughs> and away as well they went away to Blythe and won yeah. and you kind of thought ah oh, right now, now, now there's something to build on and it's, yeah, yeah. it's kind of got worse I think I think, Spen- I think Spenny was the first game that the manager really came out and criticised the players as well, wasn't it? So, you know, maybe they didn't, just didn't get a performance that night, but yeah, I mean, the six first game, story, doesn't it? Sorry, the first game we've had some negativity from the yeah from the from fans. the, from the terraces yeah. as well, which was a bit alarming. Do you think we oh, uh, You can understand it, can't you? You said on Twitter you? you thought it was maybe the tip of the iceberg, didn't well, you? It could, it could be, couldn't it? I mean, when you, I think the, I think people were pointing the finger at the owners as well, weren't they, on the terraces when we were stood there? Yeah. Um, but I mean, the management are always going to kind of face the. They're always the focal point, aren't they? Because it's their team that's on the pitch, regardless of you know who's put it on there, effectively financially. But so yeah, I thought a bit sorry for them that night, really, because yeah. you know so when we're sitting on a hand to nothing, aren't they? But yeah, I mean, you kind of look at them and you think, you know, we've had no fullbacks in every really all season, and is that is that kind of the budget, or is that just not getting the players in? I mean, I don't mm. know. You know, there's you, you can't say anybody's blameless as such, can you? But I think. The bulk of the blame lies with the yeah. with the owners and the budget. I think we need to quantify what like grief from the terraces is that and not therapy. I mean, well, yeah, that's I mean, somebody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's somebody running through the allotment and kicking a cabbage that don't belong to. It's the first time I heard it though. To be fair, I've not heard people kind of having a pop at the managers as I left previously. Mm. I don't know. A little bit. Maybe you could say a little bit out of order, but when you've been thumped six at home, nobody's going to be leaving happy, are they? No, it's um, it is difficult, but it's it's. But that just doesn't. There's a solution. That's the yeah. that's the yeah. worst thing. Is it just yeah. doesn't yeah. look like there's a solution. I mean, it's, it's, it's like different. it's not a case of um, you know even trying to force the owner out. You know, it goes tomorrow, would not it? Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. He's outside. He's got the keys. Yeah. He just um, cars running. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Who wants a non-league football club? It's a money pit. Especially at that kind of level, if you want to yeah. stay anywhere near that, it's just a money pit, isn't it? Yeah. It's you, kind need, of you need a, a backing of yeah. not just an owner, but you, you need support of local businesses. And yeah. It's I mean, a small place. And yeah. If there was a time, it was last season, wouldn't it? Obviously, in the national division. Yeah, if somebody, if somebody was going to come in. And I mean, just in general, in terms of scaling up, you know, in terms of taking it seriously and trying to get sponsors on board and looking after people like that. And, so we see engaging that with the community, you know. Do we see that as a missed opportunity? Well, I suppose you'd have to, wouldn't you, really? I mean, it, I mean, we know from the fact that nothing's been said about the ground grading, has it? No. Officially. 
I mean, it was never going to be done, was it? So, I mean, I think the intention was go up, have a season, come back down, wasn't it? Even if yeah. they finished top of the league, we'd have to say, right, so we're off back down yeah. to that from north again. Well, so, it seemed like the plan for ground grading was um, try and appeal for an extra season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Which was that, that was the plan. whole plan. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there was never going to be taken seriously off the pitch, was it, if there was no intention of kind of getting the ground up to start? Well, I think the entire then, message was enjoy the season, wasn't yeah. it? You know, if you can enjoy getting beaten every week and finishing bottom, but. I think you mean enjoy the ride in terms yeah, of the yeah. places you'll be going and down south, etc. And, and it probably, I don't know if that's unrealistic really, because it, I mean, how much money would they have had to put in yeah. to be competitive in the National League? The fact that they, they got close to 40 points was remarkable. Yeah. So I can't really knock them for that, but, um, but surely that puts you in a position to, to, you know, to go down and... Uh, and, and go down in a strong position and this is one of the things that, that frustrates me with, with Hull City is um, I've said for about the last 10-15 years or since we've been so sort of relatively successful I'd happily be a yo-yo club like Burnley or like West Brom where they go up and then they, you know, they come down and they maybe sell one player to make up the, um, the losses and they have a go at promotion again and they do that until they've established themselves in the Premier League whereas Hull City no, you've got to go up and then you come down and it's got to be an absolute disaster. Yeah. And you sell everybody that, that you own and then you try and avoid administration and then maybe in a couple of seasons you never go again. And I think that's the problem with Ferriby is they went up and that was the time maybe to, to you know, it's the best, best chance you're ever going to have at recruiting in this area. And there were slim pickings because Billy Heath took half the squad to Halifax. So yeah. even at the absolute height, they couldn't get players in that were better than what they had before. Yeah. But I mean, we're back to the budget again, aren't we? Yeah, we because of, you know, was... Yeah, 160 grand was the time. figure being banded around, which there was probably players in that division any more than a fair bit playing budget, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, Forrest Green spending that on yeah. well, their veggie fingers every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, their budget was, when it sort of reported, around 3 million or something like that. And yeah. Fair bit struggling with 160 grand. And that was a cut from the, the promotion winning season. It's it? difficult, so what, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, the bigger, maybe the bigger issue is if... So when relegation happens again, what happens next season when that squad gets overhauled again, and you're still competing with you know fairly decent size clubs? Yeah. Well, you touched on it. Budget. There'll be a massive turnover again because yeah. the players will think that they can operate at that level, and those that can. No, well, that's it. And, 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 and when you've got, anyway. when, you know, you're going to be five down already when you take out your lone players. Lose, yeah. You've got guys like like Durant and, and Johnson who are maybe showing that they can they can play at that level. Yeah. Um, you know, your crowds are going to take a hit. I don't think the home crowd can take much of a hit, but the away crowd certainly. <laughs> yeah. If you go into the Evo Stick, you're gonna you're gonna lose them big away crowds that you get from teams like Stockport and FCI, York. And, yeah. You know yeah. they they this season they're the big they're what's gonna keep you going is is, is those away crowds. So they're gonna they're gonna lose that, and then it's hard to see where where the fall ends really, isn't it? Because it's the thing about punching above your weight is where's your weight? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Pete, any thoughts? No, I think it's just depressing, isn't it? Really, I think it looks at this stage <laughs> as if as if relegation is on the cards, and it's just a case of how long it'll be before we start playing home road again. <laughs> yeah, is, is it more or less depressing than when we have to talk about Hulls? Um, I don't know. <laughs> which, which we will come to. <laughs> we were going to do with the no, uh, but I mean at the minute, it's like it, Saturday is um, non-league day, and all right. Got a good way of support expected with FC United, but are they doing anything about it? Are they promoting City sort of supporters or anything like that? Well, I've not seen. I've seen on Twitter. I think it was Thackley was saying free admission for Bradford City supporters if you bring your car. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, stuff like that's just easy to basic. You know, free half year or half price admission for your whole City yeah. pass holder. Or yeah. Well, whole City have tweeted today, haven't they, to drum up some support for non-league day? Yeah, bad. Yeah, Bart. and, and missed out whole road. Joking. <laughs> Yeah. No, so whether they're going to do one a day, I don't know. But yeah. Manchester City tweeted and they, they listed all the fixtures in the local area. Um, and Ferriby are on their doorstep and owned by the, by the Sunny Law of the, the Hull City. Hull City. Area, and Hull City are promoting Barton Town. So. Yeah, there's something wrong there. Yeah. But then the club could do it themselves, couldn't they? <coughs> Yeah, oh, so half, yeah. half a half price yeah. things, or if you're a pass over, oh, you we bring them in. Yeah, the, yeah. the danger is, you, you, you know, the, the crowds are now dropping down to less than 200 on some matches and people are just going to think well, well they've just got pagged 6-0 it's a, it's a cold wet day am I going to go there or am I going to watch telly no yeah. I'm going to watch telly yeah 
We went to the um, under 23s Hull City at Ferriby and uh, we're astounded to see they've actually put up a list of all the upcoming fixtures to promote the games. Oh, I saw that. But yeah. the problem is, you've got to be in the ground to see it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where that is in the village or in Hull. Professionally. Professionally. No, no it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a good sign, yeah. But, but you sort of advertise them to people who are already there. And it's, that's the irony in itself, isn't it? How much would it cost in real terms to print off a hundred of them, just distribute them throughout the city at strategic points, you know, on a piece of board, on a piece of paper, probably pence, I would have thought. You probably backed up actually, you know, that t- it's time, isn't it? Who's going to do it? Yeah, that's exactly. The thing, it's, 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 do it? it's down onto volunteer basis, yeah. isn't it? When, yeah, when, we talk, when we talk about no infrastructure, it's like it's it. yeah, going to do it. It's difficult because, I mean, uh, there are good people who work for Ferriby. Absolutely. I don't knock them at all. I mean, the, the people who run the, the tea stand, the people who run the bar, the people who run the turnstile every every week, um, you know, they're great people, but I don't think there's enough of them. Um, and, you know, and it sort of manages on a match day, but what about all the other time when, when you need to be promoting matches and promoting the club? And There's just nobody to do it. And it's. And I don't think there's enough of board level either. Well, no, I'm, I'm not sure there's a board these days. Is there? It just seems yeah. seems like they've, they've sort of shed some good volunteers yeah. down the years and they're desperately trying to get them in. And do you know, it, it, it's the, the way the world is, it's not a wash with people who are looking to do something for somebody else at the moment. For nothing. <laughs> for nothing, yeah. no. For you, you lose good people. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to replace them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's the um, the Ferriby section touched upon. I think we've uh, overrun slightly there with the uh, with the. Um, well, well, yeah, but hopefully things are settled, don't it? You never yeah, know. You win on the Saturday, all of a sudden you start thinking, yeah. "Well, maybe we'll win the next one as well." Maybe we'll finish second. Next year, to be said, it's not going to happen. Well, we'll find out once the change of medication. Yeah, I'm taking some medication tonight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out on Saturday as as. Uh, as, as Peter said it's uh, non-league down Saturday, Ferriby are at home to FC United, um, again a big crowd expected, no Hull City game, No. Um, why not get yourselves along if you're watching this, you're, you're local to the Hull area, get yourselves there, you, you know, you might see a few goals if nothing else. Um, <laughs> right, when we come back after the uh, short break we'll cover all things Hull City and the going-ons there.